Hello. If you could spare a few minutes of your time, I'd like to explain RevTrax release management to you, or at least give you a glimpse into some of its functionality. Release management could be used for several different activities, but what I'm going to show here today is the ability to move changes to production. So as you hopefully know from seeing RevTrack and other videos that RevTrack itself is an end-to-end -end change management solution for your SAP environments. Uh, RevTrack provides the ability to create a, a work request and have a workflow for that request to move your changes from conception of I need something through to delivery to production. Uh, RevTrack requests can contain one or many transports on each different request. So for example here, this is the, the web GUI console we're looking at for RevTrack, and I've created a couple of changes in advance. So here I want to click, I've added them to my favorites here, I want to click on this 3387. This would be a normal, typical RevTrack change where you have some basic workflow steps that allows you to move it through the environment. So here I'm starting with new, in progress would mean I'm a developer, I'm working on this, I have ability to migrate to production. It actually gets to production, be it immediately or at a scheduled time. And this step gets auto-completed for you if it goes in clean. I have a UAT step, then a migrate to production, in production and complete. Very simple little workflow. But the migrate to production, I'm given this workflow the ability based on whatever approver has been assigned to it to do the approval and actually schedule that migration to go to the production system. If I back up and show you another type of change and what these are determined by before I leave this screen, every RevTrack has a project and a request type. A project is not like something that starts this week and finishes next week. Look at projects like production support would be a project. Your N plus one would be a project. So it's a high level. And then the request type determines what workflow you want to use. So this was a basic change, very simple. I come here and click on my next one. Come back to my console, go back to my favorites again. And here show you this 3388. So this one, very similar. Um, in progress, this has an extra step here of development complete. And again, the steps in a work tro workflow for RevTrack are specific to the customer needs. I mean, even the words associated to it, like development complete, are all up to the customer. So we configure it specifically for them. So here we have an in progress, development complete, migrate to QA, gets to QA, UAT. But you notice this one doesn't have a migrate to production, it has a ready for production. So by itself, in a normal workflow, uh, in a normal process, this workflow has no ability to move the change to production by itself. You can only get up to a certain point. Now I can, you know, with proper permissions, I could come here and change my class to an emergency, and I could dynamically change this workflow to where I could have a migration step here, but that's another story we'll talk about another time. So. The ready for production just gets it to a point where I'm ready for this to be included into a release for my change advisory board to consider for my, we'll say, weekly import to production. Okay, so that's just the workflow steps associated to this. And notice here, my request type here is a change instead of the basic. So let me come back to the RevTrack console, keep that in mind. And let me click here on my release workbench. So a release in RevTrack is just another RevTrack request, but it's a special type that allows other RevTracks to be included in it. So here I'm gonna, I have a little variant here to, to narrow down what I see in my workbench. So on the left side of the screen, I have these releases that I've created. And on the right side of the screen, and in the middle is whatever I'm clicked on, shows me this, so all these are empty right here. They have nothing in them. And on the right side of the screen, these are my children requests, the ones that are uh, of that type of change that are ready to be moved to the production system. If I click on this 3286, my release over here, let me click on that. It has its own workflow and it's very simple here as well. 
It's in a state of new right now. It has a change advisory board approval for production, an actual migrate to production step, and then when it when it actually gets to production, this step would auto get auto completed, and then it has post production validation step. Uh, this one is also my project, my production support, but he has a different request type called release. Doesn't have to be called release. It's just the way we've configured RevTrack. We know that it's of a type of release. If I look at the technical of this, there's nothing on it. It has no transports, no changes. It's just an empty shell waiting there. Okay, so I'm going to come back to RevTrack. So what I can do, if I scroll down on my screen here, I have all these unassigned requests over here. Some of them are ready for production. Some of them are in a state of new. Here's that one I created just a moment ago. He's still in a state of new. And I can set rules around to say, you know, only these certain statuses are allowed to be included into my request. So what I want to do here, I'm going to click on edit. And I'm going to go grab some of these children. I'm going to say, let's get these right here. And I'm just going to grab them, drag them, and drop them over here. Then I'm going to save my changes. So this is telling me what I'm doing. I'm adding these different rev track requests into my release request. So I'm going to save here. So now when I go back to my release, it's going to contain all these different children within this release. And a way to look at this too, I mean, this is like your agile and your DevOps. Um, my, my agile, my sprint is to get it up to this point through UAT of ready for production. And my DevOps strategy would be to include them into a release, have the change advisory board review them. But instead of doing an approval on, you know, the 20 different rev tracks I created that contain 50 transports that we did this week, I'm putting it all into a release and I'm doing one approval of everything. So it's much more easy. So notice over here, now I have six different requests in my release. If I click on 3286 now, come to look at him. And if I click on technical, I can see that it contains all these different transports from different systems even, and their status of where they've gone so far. All of them have gone to QA, but that's it so far. If I click on references, I can see within my release, these are all the children. If I click on one of these children, 3290, for example, and look at his references, I can see it references back to this release. So all the links it maintains for you. Okay, so now all I have to do is come here and do my approval. So I'm going to add something else to this to create an issue. I'm going to get this stocking report, and I'm going to add him to my release as well. Let's save this. So I'm going to come back into my release, 3286. And when you do a migration approval in RevTrack, migration meaning something's getting ready to move. We're going to do an import somewhere. RevTrack has a lot of safety checks it runs for you automatically, but you can always go run those checks ad hoc. So here's my technical again, all my different changes here. I want to come here and run some of these safety checks. So first I'll do OOPS, which is Overtake Overwrite Protection System, to ensure everything's in the proper sequence. Here OOPS says no problems found, you're good to go. Continue. And I want to run this pods check next. Pods is peripheral object dependencies, looking for logical dependencies. So if I go run this, it's running this against my production migration. And I can see all these different pieces I have in here. They're in my selection, meaning they're part of this release. So there's, there's no problem here. But if I get down here to the bottom, I see that this table that this, I know that this program needs, this table is missing in this production system. So if I import this, I'm going to get a return code 8 because this is not going to be able to generate. So again, this is a look before you leap type thing. So what should I do? Well, I should come back to my release, get the one that I need, that I know that I need here. I'm going to grab this, put it into my release, save this. I'm going to go back and run this pods again against this. And I could move things from one release to another release. I mean, it's all within this one change advisory board meeting. You can move things wherever you need them to be and do your checks against them and then do your ultimate approval to actually do the migration at a scheduled time. So now I'm looking down, everything's in my selection. 
get to the bottom and this table is now included as part of this so it's not a problem anymore so from here I can go and just do my approval of this change and then move on to the I can here I can do this as the owner of the change or as the manager I'm both in this case so I could do this approval as the manager you know, and here I would be approving this cab approval for production and then move on down so in a nutshell uh, that's the very a glimpse of what RevTrack releases can do it can be used for multiple different things but in this example it's just a way to show you this is how we can act in mass on RevTrack request. Thank you.